Welcome back to the table today. Emily and I are going to take a look. We're going to dive deep. Yes, in there you go. <laughs> to Forgotten Depths. Uh, this is a game that's been out, but there's an expansion coming to Kickstarter along with the game itself, Forgotten Depths, The Ever Chamber, and, and Other more. Adventures. Mm. Yes. Uh, so Forgotten Depths is a game that we've just recently played. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about how that game plays, but then we're also going to give you kind of an idea, a peek, we don't want to ruin anything. Just a sneak peek. A little sneak peek at some of what the expansion is going to have because there's four parts to that expansion. But like I said, Forgotten Depths, if you can see, spread across this entire table. In fact, I can tell you, you cannot see all of it because <laughs> there's a lot of setup here. And what you have right here is the first ecology. Yes, uh, the ruins. In its final state, the ruins. When you play Forgotten Depths, you're going to start in the ruins. Mm -hmm. You're going to go down. You're going to face the... Stair Guardian. Stair Guardian. If you get past the Stair Guardian, good news. You can level up. You can go down Yay. to the next ecology. There are three ecologies, and when you get to the bottom, you ultimately want to get to the end of that to and face... The a final entity. The final entity. The final entity is a big bad, and we literally mean that it's going to be Very multiple big. cards. There's like heads and torsos and things like that. Yes. Um, but all the things you see here are map tiles. This is the sort of the exploration Finished part product, of the game. Yeah. Um, you're going to see some of the things that we faced and gained through experience. That's going to be fighting monsters. Finding uh, features. Yeah, exploring features and discovering legendary locations. Each ecology has a set of cards like this. And as you can see, some of them, like this one here, is a 1, a 1A, a 1B, and there was a 1C right Which here. Which we found. When you encounter something like that, you can see the little icons here allow you to sort of Create, that, create pattern. that pattern, which is going to be a theme in mm -hmm. some of the expansion content. And then you can take one of these cards, you look at it, and it's going to tell you which stack to draw from next. And it kind of tells a little story, yes. lets you encounter a thing. It could be a bad thing. It could be a good thing. Generally good things, Generally I good think, thing. that we saw. Um, and the other cool idea there is that you lay those cards out side by side. It's like a panorama yeah, yes, it of cools, what you're finding, what you're seeing. It creates a cool panorama. And we each have a character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mine is the rogue. So I have these daggers that I'm using to fight people. With the combat, we're basically, every time we encounter a creature or a monster, we're going to use two cards against the monsters too. And it's a little bit interesting because I don't just want to like have a higher number. It's yeah. based on how different ours are that I'm going to take damage and then the monster is going to take some damage. So there's a little bit of trying to finagle to hit just the right amount. So we kill the monster without it killing us back. Yeah, there is combat. There is non-combat encounters. We're going to give you a very general idea of what you're doing sort of structurally. But even more general is I would describe this as kind of a, a very chill yes. sort of uh, really lends itself well to a solo play. Mm -hmm. We should say this is one to three players. I think it's probably best played solo or maybe I think with two players, each controlling one, one character person. each. But effectively, there are three player characters. One player can play all three yeah. or three people can play those characters. And you're going to be either exploring on your turn or encountering. Yes. And when you explore, you're going to start with just this one little entrance point. Mm -hmm. And then you see this is the Stair Guardian. That's going to be the fourth card from the bottom in a shuffled deck. Then you draw cards off the top of that deck as long as you want to explore, adding these to create this map. So every time you play, you're going to be creating most map. likely a very different map. Now the key here is all these cards have little icons on it. This icon means you'll have to encounter a monster. This icon here means that you can encounter a feature. Yes. There are locks, there are little gated doors, things like that. Once you flip a card and you can't legally place it though, your game yeah, is over, yeah. so don't do that. <laughs> uh, you're going to want to flip cards and you're kind of like puzzling this out. This is part of the game that I think I enjoyed most because you're really trying to figure out, okay, we want to build to this legendary location. Right. So, okay, we've got that started over here, so let's flip another card. Okay, where can this go? Oh, it can't go anywhere, but connecting yes. to where we were wanting to build that and it kind of ruins that. So then... Well, and have some interesting features too, right? Like secret passageways yes. that allow you to go from one place to another, or there are places with items in the room so we could choose to go there and like fight off the monsters first, or we could just try to avoid that entirely and hope to get to the Stair Guardian first. So it's a lot of choice in this too on like, how do you want to build out the whole section and what do you want to prioritize most? 
Yeah, and we actually, in our game uh, that we just played, we got to the Stair Guardian, but we really wanted that third legendary, legendary location. location. So we went a little further hoping to build that pattern right yes. here, which we did. So we were able to do that. And then we went and fought a monster. We opened a treasure chest. Emily got a unique a new item. treasure, a yeah. new item. We would go on to the next ecology and then the one after that, hopefully. Yes. And then ultimately beat the final guardian or the final, final entity. entity. Yeah. So that is generally what Forgotten Depths is like. Like I said, it's kind of like... It feels kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure. Yes. It feels like a rainy Sunday afternoon. You yeah. sit down and play this by yourself or with a friend, and it's not terribly tense, but some of the combat can get a little interesting with the way those cards work. Yes. Um, what does the expansions bring? Well, there's four parts, and the first two that we're going to talk about are kind of simpler. They're easier to describe, mm -hmm. and they bring to the game, in fact, all of these bring to the game, a lot more of what fans of the game really want, and that's a lot more narrative. Yes. A lot of fans really gravitated towards these characters, so they wanted to know more about the characters. Comes in the, the campfire. Yeah, the campfire dialogue is the first one, and so it gives you a whole new set of cards that only come up when you actually go to the campfire. So the campfire is a specific icon in any of the ecologies, and you go there to kind of rest, heal up, yeah. um, monsters respawn, respawn when you go there, so be careful about that. But we did that too right before we faced the Star yeah. Guardian. And what's cool about this dialogue is it's, it's literally just like a bunch of dialogue that you're going through, and at the end of it, it's giving you kind of different choices, or it's allowing you to further the conversation, and it's dialogue literally between these different characters. Yeah, so we chose Ava and Bren, mm -hmm. so there would be dialogue cards specific to if you're playing with just Ava and Bren. There are dialogue cards if you're playing with all three, or these two, or that two, which is really cool, and it really digs a little bit more into these characters, their, yes. their relationships, their, some of their backgrounds, that sort of stuff. Again, we don't want to say anything, because yeah. I think most of the fun here is kind of discovering that on your own. But it does bring just a lot more flavor to the game, and specifically to the campfires. Yes. On that same note are the esoteric histories. So those legendary locations we had, those already had a little bit of flavor. You would read one card and you would like look over into the corner of the room and find a little bit something more. Else, you might yeah. find something else and it lets you interact with something, maybe get an item. Well, the esoteric histories add a little bit more to those same locations, but not necessarily every one of them. Mm. These are going to come out in each time, each ecology. And some of the ecology cards, I assume, will be replaced with sure. the expansion content such that it might tell you to go reference an esoteric history. So I, I'm not going to tell you anything about what these say, but if you've ever played a video game like Skyrim or any sort of mm. RPG where you're going through someplace and you find a book, and you can look at the book, and there's actually quite a bit to read in the yes. book, and it really has not much bearing on mechanics, mechanics of the game, but it adds a ton of flavor. And there's World a lot building, of that yeah. in games like Skyrim. That's exactly what this is. It's literally volumes of books that give you a little bit more of the lore. Not exactly sort of a narrative that happens right there in that room, but it gives you an idea of like the history of this yes. location that you're in and these ruins that you're in. You feel like you're more in it, yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. So those are the first two that add narrative. The next two are much more significant. Yes, they and are And not only bigger. do they add more sort of, not narrative, but more theme and, and more, mechanics, more yeah. ideas of what you're doing, but yes, a ton of more mechanics. The first one is, is the Vault of Yarrick. Yeah. And so the Vault of Yarrick is kind of like a side quest you're doing when you go through the Ruins Ecology. So when we go through the first one, the Vault of Yarrick comes in and you're able to kind of go along the map and find ways to go into this vault. And this vault is like almost a whole nother map we're doing where you're, instead of like encountering features and monsters, you're trying to create specific pathways um, to encounter that eventual audience chamber and yeah. hall and get to Yarrick's place and defeat him and his minions. Yeah, these puzzles that I really enjoyed about the map building and just the base game, I think are going to be ratcheted up quite a yes. bit in this and the other one, the Ever Chamber, because once you're in these other locations, and like, like you said, this one feels more like a side quest mm -hmm. because you're doing that and then you are eventually coming back and you're still needing to go down and defeat the yes. final entity. Uh, you can do that in the Ever Chamber, but the Ever Chamber adds a Even little more. more. There's something else you can do to actually win the game. But the patterns that you're building are next level compared to what you're yes. doing here. These patterns, in fact, the ones, the twos, the threes even get a little challenging. The yeah. fours would be very challenging. Yes. The patterns in there are actually with the hallways themselves. And it, 
both of these expansions introduce diagonal, diagonal hallways. So there's a number of different things you can sort of lay the cards out to create. Mm -hmm. And in the vault, you're doing it in a very, like we said, side quest sort of manner. Yeah. You might be able to do some things, collect some things that make you a little bit stronger for when you go back to the ecologies right. and, and go on your way. The Ever Chamber is sort of next, next, next level, level yeah. <laughs> because you go there and you're building one of like four different things. There's yes. a forge, there's portals to go back and forth. There's the engine, yeah. There's the engine, which is sort of the ultimate thing you're doing. There's this whole type of creature there, the chimerics, and they're going to chase you. They're, think of, if you've ever seen the Dark Crystal, they kind of remind me of yeah. the Dark Crystal guys. <laughs> Um, where you're going to go there and the, the difference being you're going to bounce back and forth. So yes. you might portal back to uh, an ecology. And, and it could some... be a different ecology. <laughs> so we could be starting in the ruins. We go to the Ever Chamber. We do something there and it says, okay, go back to this ecology. It could be the final ecology. We could have just skipped over. Or the last one you already did. Exactly. And you have to basically clear the table of the Ever Chamber, start anew with the ecology, and then again, you can create a portal, go back to the Ever Chamber. The whole idea of this is, like I said, that second way to win. You can go there, you can collect these items. These essences. These yeah. essences. These essences are going to be the thing that you want to sort of input into this engine, yes. which again is another one of those patterns you have to build in the Ever Chamber. Yes. Once you do that, all heck breaks loose mm -hmm. and you have to get out of the Ever Chamber back to the ecologies. And all the while, these chimerics are chasing you. Yes. And that is effectively the other way to win the game, is yes. to sort of like start that engine, overload it, I guess, is what you're doing, and get out of there. But the super cool part, too, is that as you're going, you get these items you can forge. And there's three of them. If you can forge all of them, you can choose to put them all on one character. And they become like this basically whole upgraded version of it. Yeah, you've, you've, you've changed your form. You're like, or, or, or each character can take one of the items and it's kind of maybe less significant than this. But it's like cooperative abilities. But it's abilities. a cooperative approach to that. And in fact, was it the vault had another one of those items? Yes, the chains of Valkoth that you can yeah. get as an item if you can defeat um, Yarrick in there. And that's cool because this item is one character can take it and it has one way to use it. It offers one type of power. But if the group decides that the team wants to use it, you flip it over and it has a completely, completely different, different power. So it's more cooperative, which is really cool in a game like this. I think yes. solo players will enjoy playing it one way and then maybe playing with a friend and playing, playing it, it the other different. way. So these expansions, like I said, they kind of run the gamut of small things that add a little bit of narrative, some that add a lot more narrative, and then these things that add completely almost scenario feeling adventures yes. to Forgotten Depths. Because Forgotten Depths felt like you go in and it had a little bit of a taste of storyline. Right. Yes. But this this these add really quite a bit more. Really brings it out. Yeah, exactly. So if you have any questions at all about the game, we can try to answer them down in the comments below. Until next time though, make sure everyone has fun at the table and we'll see you then.